We are still recapping 2022. In this particular podcast and video, I'm going to be talking about my favorite content from June to December of 2022, and also my favorites of the year overall. Of course, want to hear your comments, thoughts, feedback, please do so on the blog at paulhasfun.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can do it below this video here. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with June. I'd never seen the Insidious movies. My younger brother, he watched them. He said that they creeped him out. So if they creeped him out, then that definitely piques my interest. In June, the first part was available on Prime Video. And the sequel and third films were on Netflix. I binged all three. But I preferred the first two as they wrapped up the Lambert family storyline. So that's Insidious Parts 1 and 2 for the beginning of June. My list, it doesn't need to be everything that uh, came out in 2022. I wanted to give that disclaimer. It's things that I've watched for the first time uh, in 2022. Uh, also in June was Black Phone. This is the next Blumhouse movie on this list. And uh, the movie pundits I follow, which are mostly John Campia, Grace Randolph, Christian Harloff, they talked about Black Phone's great word of mouth um, from early screenings. I saw this in theaters and was amazed at Ethan Hawke's villainous performance. His second of the year, but he had the better turn in this movie. And what I mean by turn, better role for sure. His first villainous role in 2022 was in Moon Knight, which is on Disney+. Plus. But like I said, in Black Phone, he was incredible, definitely. The final show, uh, the final piece of media for June that I very much enjoyed was Umbrella Academy Season 3 on Netflix. I like the Umbrella Academy and its different take on the superhero genre. Uh, the protagonist, dysfunctional family consisting of odd but likable characters, all with their own agendas, coming together to save the world from destruction, which is something that seems to happen every end of the season. Which I don't mind, though, either. You know, I've rewatched the Footloose scene at the beginning of season three multiple times on TikTok. And that pretty much wraps up June, wraps for, up me. June for me in terms of my recommended and highlights of June, my favorites of June. Now, moving on to July, we have exclusive Netflix original uh, film, which is The Gray Man. It's an action-packed thriller, which is also one of the most expensive movies that Netflix has ever produced. It's a bombastic summer-style movie that's usually reserved for theaters, which I, like everyone else, enjoyed at home. At least tune in for Chris Evans' fantastic villainous mustache, which is a sight to be seen. Uh, the next piece of media for July was Paper Girls on Amazon Prime Video. Um, I read the first volume of this comic years ago and loved it. This kind of sci-fi coming-of-age story with these four young girls in this one town. So when this adaptation showed up on Prime Video, I had to watch it. It wasn't perfect and downright ridiculous at times. The things that the girls end up getting into and getting out of and how they speak to adults was really uh, ridiculous, definitely. Uh, but it was still a fun sci-fi ride. Uh, Too Bad Paper Girls was canceled after one season, but I still want to read the rest of the comic book run, which is now in like a compendium, which can be found on Amazon Prime and on Comixology. Also for July was The Old Man, season one, and this was on Hulu. Senior citizen Jeff Bridges is a war criminal, John Wick type soldier in hiding. Uh, when he's discovered, he goes on the run, and Dan Chase, who's played by Jeff Bridges, is not a man you want to cross paths with. John Lithgow is also in the series, and his scenes are incredible, especially the scenes when he's acting opposite Jeff Bridges. Unfortunately, halfway through the filming of season one, the pandemic happened and Jeff Bridges had real-life health issues. The show was initially supposed to be 10 episodes, but shortened to seven. However, the finale was satisfying. Hopefully, Mr. Bridges will regain his health and we can get a second season of this excellent show. Also in July, July was a good month, definitely. We were eating well in July with the TV shows. Was The Boys Season 3, and that's on Amazon Prime Video. The Boys is a show I recommend to anyone who wants to watch the current best TV program in the superhero genre. Placing in Nielsen's top 15 original streaming programs of 2022, this Prime Video exclusive was seen more than any Marvel or DC TV show. 
Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander, his performance is really amazing. And the way his character continues to develop and his story unfolds is the highlight of The Boys. I really recommend the series if you have not watched it and you like superhero shows and just want to watch something completely different. I mentioned that Umbrella Academy was something different in the superhero genre. The Boys is as well, but The Boys is fantastic. It really is. And the final thing to round out July was the second part of Stranger Things part uh, season four. This was a summer event for me, Stranger Things. It was like the thing I was looking most forward to and it did not disappoint. And now we move into August. In the beginning of August, we're going to start with a documentary. And it's the first one on this list, Light and Magic. This particular documentary, which spoke about the formation of the ILM studio and its creation of beloved film series such as Star Wars and Jurassic Park. In addition, it delves into stop motion photography, which motivates me to make my own action figure stories, which is something I'm currently doing. And you can find that on my channel here on YouTube and on the blog at paulhasfun.com. Uh, the next documentary I watched in August uh, that I very much enjoyed, that I recommend, was the Milestone Generations uh, documentary on HBO Max. Uh, the peak of my comic fandom, and for many, was the early 90s. This is the same time when Image Comics started with uh, Tom McFarlane, Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, and the other gentlemen in that group. This film chronicled a collection of black creators who established their own company a year after Image Comics was founded. They published their own comics but with homegrown black superheroes their own heroes their own black superheroes that they've created themselves and i never bought milestone comics but watching this documentary and discovering the modern inner city stories that were told such as teen pregnancy and and gangs and things of this nature uh, would have been right up my alley and this was a fantastic documentary a time capsule uh for me, as well as like la that last documentary I mentioned, uh, Light and Magic, one, which took me back to when I was a kid, for sure. Also in August, we got season one of Sandman on Netflix. I halfway read uh, the first volume of Vertigo's critically acclaimed Sandman comic during the early 2000s, but it didn't connect with me. Fast forward to July 2022, the TV series was announced to premiere on Netflix this month of August. When the show debuted, I listened to comic book aficionado Robert Meyer Burnett, his quick review on John Campia's uh, show. I, I guess John Campia is one of the movie pundits I follow, and Robert Meyer Burnett is into comic books, and he is a regular co-host on John Campia's show. And he said that uh, he loved it. He said that some of the shots were identical from the comic book panels to the TV screen, which made me curious. My favorite scene in Sandman and the whole season of Sandman was the battle between Dream, who was the Sandman, and Lucifer, who's played by Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones fame and also Wednesday fame, if you're familiar with Wednesday, right? That's super popular right now on Netflix. And the final thing for August, my final recommendation, my final uh, movie that I watched that I really enjoyed was 13 Lives on Amazon Prime. And it's a dramatization of the true story of the 13 people who got stuck in the cave in Thailand and the rescue mission, which followed. When this movie came on Prime Video, two documentaries on Netflix and Disney Plus premiered discussing the same event. 13 Lives was riveting, and I was surprised that this movie, uh, I thought it was a high-quality movie, high-quality telling of retelling of the story, that it wasn't in theaters. So that rounds out August. Now we're going into September. Uh, September was pretty stacked. In September, we got um, Cobra Kai Season 5 on Netflix, and this is a fun show, and I will continue to watch as long as the same creative team and cast stay in place. This past season, Terry Silver and his Cobra Kai students were great villains with shades of gray. The upcoming season six was announced and said to be the last. All good things must come to an end, and that doesn't disappoint me when you go out on top, which hopefully Cobra Kai will. Another show that kind of plays into my youth, into nostalgia, uh, this Cobra Kai show. Uh, the next thing that I finally got to see in September, it came up earlier than september but uh, i got to finally see it in september was prey on hulu and this is a predator story done right the predator character who is uh, linked in some ways to alien the 20th century fox sci-fi space monsters 
um, Prey shows how one can take an established sci-fi horror franchise and make it simple yet effective. A similar formula might work for another iconic movie villain, the Terminator, in my, in my mind. I think you can apply the same easy, simple formula and revive that franchise as well. And make it a streaming movie to start with. Why not? The next piece of content that I very much enjoyed that I recommend was on Hulu. And, and also Prey was a Hulu exclusive. I didn't mention that before. Uh, was Kiss Story. And this is a documentary about Kiss, the band. One of my earliest childhood memories is from Kiss Phantom of the Park movie where the band stands next to a wooden roller coaster. This is like a, a photo in my mind of when I was like a super small, small child. This was definitely during the 70s. And I've never been a big Kiss fan, but watching them on season 8 of American Idol, this was back on 2009 when Adam Lambert was performing alongside the rock legends in the finale, uh, brought back old memories. Kiss Story is a behind-the-music type documentary narrated by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. They're being interviewed, but they're also narrating the series of events that happened with the band with footage from, from you know, their time together in this band and pictures and things. It's a story that educated me in the group's formation, the tours, and the numerous hits they've had over the years. An engrossing four-hour doc, which I only put down in between parts because I had to go to bed. Got a couple, got three more for September. Like I said, September was a big month. Elvis. This was on HBO Max. I saw this in theaters in March, but was tired and fell asleep various times. I even left before the ending of the movie. I just had stuff to go do. However, rewatching Elvis at home, it quickly became one of my favorite films of 2022. The combination of Austin Butler's performance and Baz Luhrmann's direction was an experience I'll rewatch years to come. I regularly listen to Austin Butler's rendition of the Vegas rehearsal scene, That's All Right song, uh, from the soundtrack. Now, another one of my favorite movies was a movie that I saw for the first time in September, and that was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I heard movie critics rave about this movie around the beginning of the year, 2022. By September, the film still had yet to come to a streaming service, so I brought it on pay-per-view, Adventure, sci-fi, comedy, drama. I found myself cheering and crying at different points while watching this movie. Like I said, this is one of my favorite movies of 2022. And rounding out September was a movie that I went to the movies to go and see, and that was Barbarian. I watch this and smile a few weeks apart, and Barbarian is the superior of the two. One of the several small-budget horror films released in 2022, which scored big profits. I think of like Barbarian, Smile, and also Black Phone, which kind of fall into that category. Highly enjoyable. Even though Barbarian was a better movie than Smile, uh, Smile is the one that actually gave me trouble sleeping at night. So Barbarian was a good time. Now we are into October. The first one up in October was on Disney+, Plus, and that was Werewolf by Night. This was a surprise as I like to see the MCU do more of these kind of special presentations which introduces a group of characters or we revisit old characters similar to what they did with the special presentation for Guardians of the Galaxy's holiday special which was a lot of fun. Uh, the werewolf by night himself, he definitely gave me some Wolverine vibes, that final scene when he was slashing up the soldiers, good stuff. Wolf by Night. In October, we also finished, because it started earlier, but finished the whole season of House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon on HBO Max. I'm late to the party when it comes to Game of Thrones, and digging into the whole HBO series, like many others, during the pandemic, when we had a lot more free time. Uh, House of the Dragon fills the Targaryen backstory and doesn't disappoint. I also enjoyed the focus on fewer characters and seeing them grow over time as this uh, first season takes place over a number of years. And rounding out uh, October, October, like I said, was a lot less uh, content than was in September, was uh, Green Lantern, Beware My Power. And I saw that on HBO Max as well. I found this while browsing the DC section on HBO Max. DC, hands down, has excellent animated movies with adult overtones a space adventure that delves deeper into the green lantern john stewart and adam strange whom i haven't heard about in years and now we are in november in november we got some good stuff see 
uh, season three, and this is an Apple TV Plus exclusive. And to me, Jason Momoa's best work is his uh, DCEU appearances as Aquaman and C on a Apple TV Plus. He's come up with a lot of stuff, but I've never heard anybody else kind of go on about like, hey, you got to watch this Jason Momoa thing. I, not that I like I've heard people talk about you know see in that way but uh, i just saw like the trailer for this and it, it, it intrigued me this whole population of people that are blind living in the wilderness uh and tribes and fighting each other this season was the final season season three of c i recommend that if anybody's looking for a great sci-fi action kind of show a c is fantastic and the fact that all three seasons are there on apple tv you can watch the whole saga and be done with it I recommend C for sure. Another Apple TV Plus exclusive was Spirited. It was November, the holidays were around the corner, and there was a giant billboard for Spirited displaying Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds near the Port Authority bus terminal in Times Square. I work in that area. I thought, these two actors have made me laugh plenty before, so let's check this out. This Apple TV exclusive was delightful and had a different spin on the Scrooge story the, the the scrooge story that we get uh you know like the scrooge movie with bill murray which is a classic uh, that's scrooge story basically it's a different spin on that and uh, it's a heartwarming musical as well which i don't mind sometimes musicals kind of get me a little bit uh, i don't want to watch this but uh, i enjoyed it i enjoyed uh spirited fantastic movie um also uh in november we got the whole show wrapped up was that of andor on disney plus and for me, Andor beats any live-action Star Wars TV currently on Disney+, Plus, and I'm even talking about The Mandalorian. It starts off slow, but the intrigue and story build as we see the forming of the rebellion against the Empire as this movie takes place before Rogue One. And Rogue One, as we know, uh, takes place before uh, Star Wars A New Hope and on and on. My favorite episodes are definitely the prison episodes that starred Andy Serkis, who was fantastic, you know. So Andor was incredible, Andor season one. And rounding out November, we have The English on Amazon Prime Video. And this is another great Prime Video show that uh, no one seems to talk about a lot of the Prime Video shows. And they got some good stuff on there. And The English is one of them. A stoic and violent Western starring Emily Blunt. The English put its hooks in me from the very first episode. I, I was just like, let's just watch more. This is incredible. Raph Spall uh, is also a great villain who you love to hate. Uh, excellent and gorgeous looking show. Chasky Spencer, I think is the name of the, of the co-lead with Emily Blunt. And uh, he's a badass in this. He's this Indian who was uh, in the U.S. military, but then he's done with them and he goes off on his own. But this show, uh, the English, beautiful show, fantastic action, great show. I recommend that. And now rounding up the end of the year, December, we have a few things here. We have Pistol on Hulu. And uh, I'm entertained by these Hulu dramas that are based on actual events. Uh, Dope Sick with Michael Keaton uh, was sad yet amazing. The Dropout with Amanda Seyfried was eye-opening. Tommy and Pamela was amusing. Um, and finally, Pistol, which is based on the beginnings of the Sex Pistols band and the punk scene in the UK. It plays to uh, making your dreams come true, even if you don't know how to play guitar, even if you come from being poor and homeless and making something of yourself and like i said the pistol miniseries because i don't think there's gonna be a season two uh definitely plays to that pistol was fantastic white lotus so in 2022 i actually got to see white lotus season one and white lotus season two when it premiered and this show is freaking amazing uh, so i watched the first season based on movie critic grace randolph's one of my favorites uh, recommendation and found it awkward funny and intelligent um, with a murder mystery thrown in the mix as soon as the first episode ended for season two i was there every following sunday to gobble up the next installment the white lotus season two has a dark comedic charm and I love the soundtrack by Cristobal Tapia de Vere, which has all the weird chanting. And rounding out December, we have Avatar The Way of Water. And I saw that in theaters. And uh, as I mentioned before, Stranger Things Season 4 was an event for me. Uh, Avatar 2 was as well. It was long-winded at parts, especially when it came to uh, dealing with the whales. But great drama, action, and peak science fiction. As you noticed with this my list of 
I like science fiction. I like action stuff naturally. I got a lot of folks, a lot of guys like action stuff. Avatar was the peak of that for the whole year for me. I'm talking about above Andor, above Stranger Things, above Sea, like like the the production in this movie. I'm sure the world by now has seen it. The, the movie's freaking over, made over $2 billion already, but uh, Avatar was wow, you know. Being transported to Pandora was not disappointing, to say the least. All right, so those were my favorites from June to December. Now we're going to be talking about my favorites overall of 2022. Favorite games, movies, TV shows, animated movies. We're not going to get into books because I'm going to do that in the next episode, which is going to be me kind of recapping my life for 2022. But we are going to get into comic books, though. And once again, uh, to be added onto this list of mine, things did not have to come out in 2022. Uh, I have, I've had to experience it for the first time in 2022, so I just wanted to make that known. We're talking about games. These are games that I played and I completed. Halo Infinite, Wolfenstein The New Order, and The Gunk. I started these games, I finished these games all in 2022, and these were all Xbox games that I played on Xbox Game Pass. Now moving on to comics. Uh, my favorites of the year were The Woods, the entire series, which was published in between 2014 and 2017, uh, published by Boom Studios. Great sci-fi. Again, uh, this group of young people get transported to this other world and this whole uh, almost like Lord of the Flies reestablishing civilization thing happens. Fantastic, The Woods. And also Wolverine, Enemy of the State, which was suggested by geek history lesson it was available on comiXology i read both of these on comiXology and talk about like a, a fantastic action comic book uh and the satisfying one was wolverine enemy of the state published by marvel and that was published in night in 2005 now talking about tv which is the longest list here before we get into everything else tv favorites of the year Yellowstone seasons one through four. This is on Peacock. Reacher season one on Prime Video. Peacemaker season one on HBO Max. The White Lotus seasons one and two on HBO Max. Uh, As we see it on Prime Video season one. C season three on Apple TV Plus. Ozark the final season on Netflix. Stranger Things season four on netflix house of the dragon season one on hbo max the boys season three on prime video and finally the last kingdom season five on netflix favorite tv in 2022 now for favorite movies this list is short it was elvis it was everything everywhere all at once and top gun maverick favorite movies of 2022 Favorite streaming movies, I kind of separated this one, was uh, 13 Lives on Prime Video and The Gray Man. Favorite streaming movies there. Favorite animated movies were Turning Red on Disney+, Plus, The Green Lantern, Beware My Power, and I guess I, I maybe messed up with this one, Legend of Vox Machina, that's a streaming animated TV show on Prime Video, so I maybe messed up on that one but in terms of adding it to a different section, but... All my favorite animated stuff for 2022. And finally, favorite documentaries were the Light and Magic documentary on Disney Plus and the Kiss Story documentary on Hulu. But that's everything. Like I said on the top, I want to know what you think. Comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you are listening to the podcast form, you could do so on the blog. Comment, I mean. Uh, PaulHasFun.com. In the links below, you'll see all the different ways you can support this podcast this YouTube channel, everything I'm trying to do here. And as always, I really appreciate you spending your time with me, and I will catch you on the next one.